come with us now, if you dare, down a rickety staircase into a dank, dark basement. What awaits the Saturday Night Freak Show? <laughs> Hey, thanks for listening to the Saturday Night Freak Show podcast, a movie review and talk show podcast that comes your way every Saturday, whether you're ready for it or not, whether we're ready for it or not, in our quest to take over the planet. These are the internet radio superstars. Michaela. Sean. And I'm Colin. And tonight we watched a movie that was chosen by... Sean. What did we watch tonight? I just had a a shockwave go through my brain because I saw something in a filmography that I have to tell Colin... Uh, soon but oh, all right i thought you were having like a like a moment where you were seeing a vision uh in another plane of existence real quick or something kind of, that's what it felt like was happening of, i was i was just transferred back an hour to a conversation i just had with colin okay. so oh, that's oh, where i was oh, in my head over there for a second tonight we watched stir of echoes directed by david kep is that how you pronounce the last yes. name kep okay from the, year, from, oh, the year, from the year 1999 mm-hmm. so yep. we are in our great 25th great a great year it was just a great year i, I think this was a year of well i mean i guess we're, that's why we're talking about this movie mm-hmm. At the time, it felt like it was overshadowed, maybe because of it was a, it was a year. Of, yeah. Uh, oh yeah. Know. I mean, yeah. It's a Star Wars, Phantom the, Menace, the, the yeah, resurgence Star Wars of back, Star Wars. Yes. If for nothing else, that mm-hmm. yeah, Star Wars is back. Mm-hmm. Um, we had Sleepy Hollow, which we just right. did. We had Sleepy um, Hollow, like uh, the Mummy, yeah. the remake mm-hmm. of the Mummy, and uh, yeah. uh, mm-hmm. the Sixth Sense broke mm-hmm. out on the scene. Yes. Sixth and Sense. this opened a month later. That's funny that you mentioned the Sixth Sense, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> the movie that buried this movie. Uh, yeah. How, how closely were they released? Um, Do we a know? Month. A month. Oh yeah. boy. That's. And I remember seeing them both on opening night. Yeah. So I remember. Uh, how I felt about, you know, like, oh, wow, this is a, you, you kind of have a similar. I think the thing that felt really similar about them, a kid who sees dead it people. was the kid who sees dead people. <laughs> yep. And you're like, wow, I just like saw this yeah. a month ago. Mm-hmm. But uh, it turns out this one is based on a novel. Yes. That came out a long time beforehand indeed mm-hmm. by richard uh matheson richard matheson yeah mm-hmm. who wrote many things um you might know more about that you get you take richard matheson i'll take david kep as far as <laughs> okay well richard goes. matheson is one of the uh heavyweights in the horror genre if you go back and listen to our legend of hell house episode i think yep. we talked about richard matheson at length but he wrote uh i am legend yep. right which has been ad- adapted in uh, like three it's movies, I think, story. right? right. Yeah. The Vincent Price one, the the yeah. Omega Man, yeah. uh, mm-hmm. the the Will Smith one. Mm-hmm. Um, making another one, mm-hmm. and they're going to make it, yeah the sequel. Yeah. Um, he um, did um, Duel, right? He wrote right, um, right. Duel. right, Duel. He wrote uh, the Night Stalker, which was Kolchak. Mm-hmm. So he created Kolchak, uh, the Incredible Shrinking Man, yeah, uh, and many episodes of the Twilight Zone. He was a it. Twilight Zone guy. This feels like, and I believe if you look at an the, extended Twilight Zone episode, I think if you look at the poster for Jaws 3D <laughs> that I have, it's like story by Richard uh, Matheson. He didn't write had the his, script, had but his hand in everything, uh, yeah. Okay, so uh, he's a horror legend, yes. right? Who wrote this book? I think in the fifties. I think so. I believe, mm-hmm. but oh, it was it uh, made as a film ninety nine by David Kep. So David Kep also is uh, oh, David Kep. All right, you guys ready? Now the reason. All right, the flashback I had that I told you about yeah. uh, wrote in nineteen ninety. I come in peace. No way. No. I come in peace. What wrote it? Which is why when I was talking about the I CD didn't know throw, that oh, right with the CD God. throwing. Yeah, he wrote it. <laughs> It's funny how wow. the subconscious very, very, very works. Funny. All right, so he started out. Uh, I mean, he's a. Uh, um, uh, he started out as a writer. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh, uh, apartment Zero, Bad Influence, Why Me? I Come in Peace in 1990. Toy Soldiers. Okay. Have you ever seen gotcha, that movie? Yeah. I, I love like that the, movie. It's like Die Hard in a Prep School. Yes. Yeah, and it's got like uh, Is Sean Astin in there. Yeah. Sean Astin, Will Wheaton. Yeah. Um, there's a couple other. Lou Gossett Jr. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's yeah. a great movie. Mm-hmm. Yeah, like what? I, lo- I really love that movie. Um, Death Becomes Her. Oh, oh my God. Amazing. He co-wrote Incredible. this with a lot of these. He has a co-writer. Yeah. Uh, <clears throat> Death Becomes Her, Jurassic Park, mm-hmm. Carlito's Way, Damn, uh, The Paper, The Shadow. The this guy is an icon of American cinema. Is basically, what I'm hearing. Mission yeah. Impossible, The Lost World, Snake Eyes, The Nick Cage movie. Nice. That's three De Palmas. Yeah. Uh, Stir of Echoes, Panic Room. Oh, somebody been pay- saving that. For, oh, yeah. I like that movie. I, yeah, no, I like I've been it, saving yeah. it for the pot. I was oh, okay. saying, I think, David Fincher. Yeah. They paid him four million dollars for that script. Mm-hmm. Yeah, 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 yeah. Because he was one of those like wonder kind writers. Yeah. I mean, yeah, that's and like Esther Haas and mm-hmm. everything. Yeah, for, for, work with Spielberg and yeah. work mm-hmm. with De Palma oh, and work with uh, Zemeckis, Raimi, Spider Man. Mm-hmm. 
Uh, wow. Secret Window, War of the Worlds. There's your Spielberg. Secret Window he directed, right? Was he that the next Secret. movie he directed after this one? Uh, well, he directed his first. Uh, there was a movie <laughs> called Suspicious he directed, and The Trigger Effect. Those came before Star Oh, Trigger Echoes. Effect, But yeah. Secret Window was the next one he directed in 2004. Okay. Uh, he, War of the Worlds, he wrote uh, Zethra, A Space Adventure. That's a John Favreau directed that movie. That's uh, Jumanji, that. but with Space uh, Jumanji. Space yeah. Jumanji. There you go. Uh, yep. Kingdom of the Crystal Skull. Fuck that. Oh, boy. Okay, so he has some misses. That's where the... <laughs> <laughs> plateaued, huh? Yeah. But he's the guy you call. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Like- yeah. I mean, his batting average is pretty great. Right? Yeah, I can't really be like, ooh, Crystal Skull when everything else before yeah. that is. Wrote like- and directed Premium Rush. Premium starring Rock. Joseph Gordon-Levitt. Oh, Gordon that Levin. like bike delivery, <laughs> delivery movie. movie. Yeah. Yes. That, one that trailer tried to make it look is so it, dramatic. Isn't what's his name? The bad guy, Michael Shannon. Yeah, isn't he the I bad guy in that the movie? He's the bad bike delivery guy. Yeah, basically. Uh, he wrote Jack Ryan Shadow Recruit. Uh, okay. okay, okay. Brace yourselves. He directed the Johnny Depp starring Mordecai. Really? Oh. That universally oh. trashed oh. movie. The bombiest of bombs. For yeah. whoever saw it, I don't oh, know who they boy. did. But that means he had a good relationship with Depp after Secret Window. Right. right? Yeah. So he's working yeah, with they the, liked okay. each other. Yeah. They liked to work. <laughs> Secret uh, Window has a very dumb twist, if I remember correctly. Maybe we got to do that. It's a lot of corner movie. Yeah. Right? yeah. 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 Um, uh, 2017's <laughs> The Mummy, he wrote. Oh. Oh, oh no! Yeah. <laughs> Tom yeah. Cruise one. Okay. Yeah. Oh no, indeed. <laughs> um, then uh, in 2020, wrote and directed, reteaming with Kevin Bacon. Mm-hmm. You should have left, which yeah. I didn't see. Was it any good? No. No. Okay. Aww, there we go. Bummer. No, I mean I was bummed oh. out because it was like you know to me, yeah. you know, it's like the stir of echoes. Guys are getting back together, right? Right. But yeah, I think no. I remember you being disappointed. Mm-hmm. Uh, Dial of Destiny wrote. Mm-hmm. Uh, oh really? Okay. Mm-hmm. Indiana Jones is sticking with the uh, yeah. yeah. Uh, and the upcoming Jurassic World Rebirth, of course, oh, as boy. a co-writer. Okay. As Good uh, luck to you, sir. Based on oh, okay. no, no, no. Uh, uh, Post production. I don't know what that means. Okay, so maybe he you know, mm-hmm. contributed mm-hmm. in some way. Yeah, okay, some way, yeah. so he so, is uh, quite a career. Yeah, mm-hmm. yep. Quite a career, and made this movie. Uh, then adapted the Matheson story, but also directed it. So uh, kudos to you, sir. For doing that, um, it comes from uh, the night. Okay, so I mean, I guess the big, uh, the elephant in the room is this, is uh, the Sixth Sense. Now, yes. you know, you you watch this movie and you're like, you know, they they're very different movies, mm-hmm. right? Mm-hmm. Um, I hear a lot of internet chatter that basically says, uh, you know, Stir of Echoes was the better movie. Yeah. We'll get there. I but, I, uh, I mean. I feel like that used to be a hot take at one point in time, but yeah, the pendulum has started to shift in that I direction, say, I feel like. Over time, yeah. because, well, I think that's probably backlash of Sixth Sense being such a, a yeah. huge right. thing. Pop culture, huge. Huge. Yeah. huge. Well, yeah. I, well, I was going to say, I think, I mean, I was I was young when it came out, but I remember the movie coming out, but even I had like the twist ruined for me before I even saw the movie. Yeah, I So did I too. don't know what it's like to exist in a world where you got your right. mind blown by Neither the movie. So. That was so... Seeing it on opening night, yeah. right? Like, I knew the twist to the sixth sense. You know, just I had figured it out. Mm-hmm. I think based on I saw like a review, mm-hmm. I saw like a trailer and a review, and somehow it was like, well, what if this? And then you go into the movie, and it's like obvious mm-hmm. when you're in that right. position. So the experience of watching it was like, okay, there is no real surprise to right. where it's going. And then you go a month later to see stir of echoes and you're like okay i don't see necessarily where this is going right. and the movie kind of delivered and so then you're like i had a better experience and i think stir of echoes was also maybe scare spookier scarier like the I jump so. scares worked on me yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah but i have since gone back There's and some it's good like ones in six sense. the six sense have Barton some good ones in the Ten yes. is really Ju- bad. The six yeah. cents, Even just I the think. lady at the window yeah. at the end who walks away mm-hmm. who got, and it's just like, oh Jesus. Like mm-hmm. there's they both got Yeah. I think the Sixth Sense is the better movie, but Probably. the stir of echoes at the time was to me more satisfying and you know, going back, right. it's like right. this is a, it's still a 
uh, you know, I like it a lot. Even watching it tonight, you can I can see the moments that are just like, that's a little goofy. Yeah. Mm. That's a little goofy. Mm-hmm. That's a little goofy. You know, and I didn't get that feeling watching The Sixth Sense, even though I watched it knowing the twist and I watched mm-hmm. it after having seen right, Stirring yeah. Echoes. That movie is 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 impeccable. Mm-hmm. Yeah, is, is serious and mm-hmm. emotional and yeah. just a lot more emotional than this movie. Yeah. 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 And I, I think, think that's yeah. works to its favor. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. Mm-hmm. I can't watch this movie now without like hearing Roger Ebert in my <laughs> mind, you know, like, because I think his thing was like, and then he starts to dig and he digs and he digs or something yeah. like that. And he's, and then he finishes the review, you know, it's basically uh-huh. positive, but it's like maybe David next time a little less digging. <laughs> and I can't watch it now yeah. without going like, is there too much digging? Yeah. It's, it's, and it's also <laughs> funny. He's like, I'm supposed to dig, I'm supposed to dig. Yeah. But like then- he gets a little rain man about it. <laughs> right. To dig. But then, like, it's not really the digging that, I mean, we'll get to it, but it's not really the digging. Right. He took it it a little too far. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, For the end result, but (laughs) we'll get to it. Yeah. The man's going crazy. Right. He is seeing I'm just saying the clue was slightly off. (laughs) Yes. You know? Yeah, everything's a little off. Yeah. But that's kind of the whole movie. You're just like, it's going to give you something. It's just a little to the left of whatever you think it is. I do appreciate the Chicago representation. Oh, my God. Yeah. Inject it into my veins. Because this feels real. Like yes. the block party feels like something I've been to before. The like block party, the accents, I the mean accents Kevin Bacon's a little over uh, just a bit, <laughs> yeah. but still but it's you're going over there. Yeah, yeah. And to yeah. see the bears. Yeah. yeah. And you sometimes know. you just you, you uh I think when you get into an accent like that, you lean into it because yeah. it's just, because it's fun. Right. Yeah. That's a fun accent that yeah, just like, you know, Catherine, hey, why, why don't you just shut the fuck up and go away? Mm-hmm. Like Catherine Irby though, like nothing. she she's not nails from Chicago. It. I know, but it it sound hers is more authentic because it's not forced. Right. Yes. It doesn't draw attention to itself, but you're yes. like, oh, she is doing a Chicago mm-hmm. accent. Mm-hmm. Sorry yeah. to all you good people. This is when we watch these. We're like, do we sound like this? Yeah. We probably do. Oh yeah. But oh, with yeah. the very hard R's. Chicago. The, yeah. Big A's. Yeah. Um, mm-hmm. But yeah, cheese. I, I, I think I have always kind of held this up in my mind as like this feels um so close to life mm-hmm. yeah you know <laughs> it really <laughs> it's does. like this is the chicago movie you know because mm-hmm. uh, it it's looks like, like it it feels like it it's the right and amount of dirt like yeah just the right amount because like yeah, i was looking at the interiors of the apartment yeah I'm like i know what those apartments are I yeah it's that old wood right kinda, and it's like oh there's a couple of layers of lead paint in right there, you can tell because chicago's like new york is dirty but chicago is not dirty in the same way new york right. is and i don't know like yeah it just this feels authentic especially if this is clearly like fall like halloween we see Halloween decorations up at one point, I think. I think so, yeah. so it's like it does feel perfect for that time of year too. And the the porch party that they right. go to, I was like, this is any anybody I know that lives in an old house, this is how we yeah. party. Oh, Everyone yeah. goes yeah. outside to smoke and you just end up hanging outside. Yep. And know? everything's just like a little damp. Yeah. Because mm-hmm. Chicago's always just a little well, damp yeah. around this Yeah, time. there's like a different vibe. I mean, like you can feel the atmosphere of Chicago mm-hmm. is different than like the New York atmosphere this one i guess maybe that's it it's like is it because we saw the l train 50 million, yeah, 50 million times driving it's, into us it's like it's like street level chicago yes. like a lot of other movies you see that are chicago they're like uh, a bigger Downtown. level Downtown. or something yeah. no this is, this is like working class mm-hmm. living yep. you know neighborhood chicago neighborhoods mm-hmm. love it I want to smoke a cigarette and have a sausage. And, like it, seriously, it feels like you should be just pulling up on a neighbor's porch and sitting down, and yeah. they'll share a cigarette if you, you give them some. Yeah, that's yeah. what it feels like. It feels like I've walked through this neighborhood before. Yeah. You know, like. Yep. And I guess that's like a big credit to this movie. Mm-hmm. I guess that I always give it is that it does kind of like yeah, it's a multi million dollar Hollywood production, but it does kind of accurately capture this like little slice of neighborhood mm-hmm. you know yeah. that like a lot of movies always force right uh you know mm-hmm. their representation of like these things this one actually feels like they got it right yeah mm-hmm. um all right so who's in this movie we got like a stacked yeah. cast yeah. in this kevin bacon mm-hmm. yeah stars in this movie uh Catherine irby uh, the a future Dennis the Menace is hey, in this Catherine movie. Catherine Irby, who the hell is she? Catherine Irby, uh, for everyone who doesn't know, like <laughs> I, I've always known her from. She was in uh, Law and Order: Criminal Intent for like the seven seasons it was on <laughs> with Vincent D'Onofrio. She was also uh, did the switch over to Oz, which, like I was telling Colin earlier, there's that. Did you ever watch Oz? No. Oh, great show. Um, but it was always like all the co- all the characters who played cops in Law and Order played convicts in Oz. Uh, so that's Maloney, amazing. J.K. Simmons, not Kevin the same Irby. production crew. Uh, the crews, though. You're just saying it was like some kind of 
just unspoken. Some, it was. Like, it was because they all ended two. up being convicts and really <laughs> yes. bad ones too. Like yeah. the like because the concept of Oz is like it is one of the most maximum security prisons, and they're just all the characters in there are just pieces of shit bad people. Have yeah. you seen that Arrested Development joke about Oz? Mm-hmm. It's like a really quick cutaway where <laughs> Buster Bluth, who's like the most uh, dysfunctional adult Bluth kid. They were like, yeah, that's like the one time he thought he was watching Wizard of Oz and it cuts to him and he's like, thousand yard stare watching Oz, the TV show as like a seven year old kid, just like, what the fuck? Yeah. And that's not not a lie yeah. because there's some graphic it's shit brutal. that happens yeah, in yeah. that show. I, I lied. I have seen a couple of the episodes. I remember it was like shot on video or something. This is a digression. Yeah. But it is, but yeah. a worthy one. Yeah. Catherine Irby, I remember her always as she was like in the movie, what? And nobody else remembers this. What about Bob with uh, mm-hmm. Bill Murray? Mm-hmm. And she was like a little kid. And that was what we say. Eight like, years before this? Yeah. yeah. And it's like this was, wow. I was seeing her as like, oh, she's grown up and mm-hmm. she's got like an adult right. role. And yeah. okay, mm-hmm. she's good. Yeah. She feels, I guess, uh, going with that, like real, you know, it's like yeah. she feels like I know this person. And, they and, all feel like people I know. Right. Yeah. Like and they, I like their yeah. relationship. Mm-hmm. They're just like, because even, uh, oh, Elena Douglas. Is, mm-hmm. it this, is it Elena or Eliana? I think uh, it's Eliana. Eliana yeah. Douglas is yeah. in this play, and Catherine Irby's sister. Mm-hmm. And yeah. even she's like, you guys are like the best fucking couple mm-hmm. ever. And that's, the, the you know, and you get that vibe from mm-hmm. them. They're just like I always remember her from Cape Fear. Yes. What's the what's yes. the role that you remember Elena Douglas from? Oh, I, I feel like know, she's been in so much. So yeah. much. Like, <laughs> like, yeah. We're all reaching for our yeah. to look it up. But just because, and I like her no matter what she's in. Yeah. I forgot how much I like her in this movie. Yeah. <laughs> she's like, she's yeah. really just, well cast. I just in this everyone's movie. everyone's like just yeah. like funny enough to be realistically funny, not right. like trying too hard, just offhandedly. Yeah. A great. Oh my script. god, we forgot she was in To Die For. We just oh, watched right. that. We yeah. Watched it, yeah. yeah. yeah, yeah. She's um, like the free spirit sister, right? Yeah. Who's into which in uh, the nineties? This was like yeah, peak yeah. of this kind of like free spirit new wave hippie culture that came back around uh-huh. in the nineties. Yes, yeah. Because yeah. the nineties had dress, that. Yes, the, 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 the fashion dressing. is so good. Oh. It's, the fashion is authentic as fuck to this yes. time period it too. Is. And I love that Catherine Irby's character is like no matter what she's going to, it's jeans and whatever black t-shirt and a choker yeah yep. a choker. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah if she went goes through her mother's wake jeans, yep. jeans <laughs> yep. and, a, and a, a top and, and then just a little sweater going over it's just like jeans everywhere mm-hmm. yeah. that's that's the chicago way mm-hmm. <laughs> no she's matter wearing, what she's wearing her dress like, jeans, i put on my good jeans yes, today yeah, yeah like these are the ones no wrinkles yeah, yeah. in these jeans that's working class folk <laughs> yeah. dress jeans and our work right. jeans these are the thicker denim mm-hmm. Oh, we got uh, Kevin Dunn is also in the movie yep. and uh, MF Mad, the keeper of the Saturday uh, Night Wall, uh, Saturday Night Free Show Wall of Fame, lets us know that Kevin Dunn day. has been in three movies, right. and those are. Do we no, we didn't. Not we didn't do day. it for the. Oh, I figured Brent would have brought it for like the quote unquote time travel. Mm. No, but he, he was. was um, he was in Ghostbusters two, which gotcha. we did on. He the was. Show. He's like, I have a strong feeling that the Earth <laughs> is going to end on February fourteenth. <laughs> It's like Valentine's Day. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Bummer. One other movie that we also did, aside from Stir of Echoes, was hint. Godzilla, the Roland Emmerich oh, yeah, he's Godzilla. a general or something. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah. So welcome, sir, and your certificate is in the mail. <laughs> we'll put your picture up on the on the wall. Is, yeah, he's still with us, right? I, I I'm not 100% sure not 100%. because I <laughs> haven't seen him in, in right. so long. Right? But it seemed like in the 90s he was a fixture. He was in mm-hmm. a few good men, right? Yeah. Wasn't he? Yeah, so. So when I, yeah, he always shows up. He's always good. Uh, yeah. I'm sure, I made, was there a Honey, I Shrunk the Kids movie in there? So there was a, he's been mm-hmm. on tons of shit. So the movie takes place in a, uh, a very atmospherically realistic, uh, we're saying, as yes. having lived it, uh, Chicago <laughs> yeah. neighborhood. Trust us. Right? Mm-hmm. And... Um, we're introduced I'm to... I'm on the L every day. Yes. <laughs> Trust us. One of the few cities with an elevated train. So Yeah, it's like it, this one in Pittsburgh and yeah. maybe one other one. Yeah, and it runs through like the background of like every single shot that, <laughs> that, that happens here. Yep. Um, the, uh, I guess, so the movie, you know, this time I was watching it and I'm sitting there going like there is, this is why David Kep is like one of the most sought after screenwriters. Mm-hmm. There's an economy... Of uh, setting up everything you need to know within the first like twenty minutes of this movie, yep. right? Mm-hmm. Uh, the first act is like I'm like this is like flawless, <laughs> right? He sets up in the first scene. We see this little kid Jake who's uh, talking to 
what we later determined to be a ghost. Right. right? He's talking to the camera, and so mm-hmm. you're automatically kind of uh, uneasy or, or set off your access because he's talking straight to us. Mm-hmm. But you're just like, okay, so who is he talking to? Is there going to be a reveal of it and everything? And it doesn't like automatically flip around, but you end up with another character and you see the kids, there's nothing but a wall on the other side of it. So so who is he talking to? Is this where he's in the tub? Yeah, because he's like, can I ask you a question? Mm -hmm. What is it like to be dead? And Mm -hmm. he just kind of hangs on that and you're like, ooh, spooky. Mm -hmm. Great way to answer, right? right? And then you uh, you a little look at the wall and then cut Mm -hmm. to black. And then we get an introduction of our... um, our couple, right? Mm-hmm. Uh, Kevin Bacon and Catherine Irby and, and Ileana Douglas. Yeah. And it basically uh, sets up right that um, they're going to have another kid. Yes. Um, he's kind of bummed about that because he used to be in a band. I think he was about to start like to be in a band again, right? He was going to be in a band with like some other guys. And now like having a kid is kind of throwing him off of this. Right. So I think it's one of those things up- where you're just like on the weekend, just like they, I mean, they play, they probably play bars and everything yeah, yeah. And like mm-hmm. that. And maybe they had like a, like a bigger, uh, the biggest event that they're going to, it's not huge for, you know, anybody, but it's the biggest event their band has played. Well, feels like this it's feels up. so real too. We all so, know people I, in bands yeah, that yeah. play the local bars. Between this, this is so real. and the little speech he gives to her, I was just like, oh, Jesus Christ. Right. <laughs> I know. That's a little real. Right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because that kind of like, you know, I'm not always going to be a lineman forever. Right. Like, I mean, like, right. I know, and when, the, when he says, like, I know I, I said a lot of stuff and I just want to make sure I wasn't giving you, you know, it wasn't a line. Yeah, it's yeah. a good yeah. performance. Like, oh, yeah. Jesus. Yeah, yeah. Right. It's very heartfelt mm-hmm. and all that, but we get that like he is. Um, I think that's what they're going for with his character, right? There's like something unrealized there. Yes. Like he wants to be uh, some. Well, I guess in in the scene, right? Like that's what it's really mm-hmm. establishing is yeah. that like I just didn't think I'd be so ordinary. Yeah. Right. right? Like purpose or something to you know. Something yeah. that, He's midlife crisis thing, yes. you know, yep. like my life isn't what I thought it was going to be. And, yep. you know, well, you don't have worry, to change it or learn to accept it. He's going to give him something to, to prove himself. Mm-hmm. And yep. then the third scene introduces all the cast that you need for the rest of the movie yep. and basically mm-hmm. sets up like, I, I wouldn't say you'd be able to solve the mystery, but it is like setting these things up. There's a guy uh, a neighbor who's like, hey, just moved in. How's the house treating you? He's renting a house from this other guy. Yep. You know, mm-hmm. they're inviting him over to a house party and we get to meet the, the his neighbors, right? right. Kevin you, Dunn and the, right. and the other guy. You learn that he moved in. You learn that the guy he's talking to, like the guy who owns his house lives across the street from him. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. You, you're learning geography. You're learning mm-hmm. character information about who they are in relation to those characters. Mm-hmm. Like you said, the economy of storytelling just going because it's a camera sweep over the front port, the porch mm-hmm. party as everyone's filling up right. from the keg. Like you learn a lot from these people in a real quick time. I always, you know, uh, at one point I was aspiring screenwriter trying to figure this stuff out. We and all? you're like, mm-hmm. you're like, how does he do it? He introduces these characters that are basically telling you things you need to know at the end of the movie. The, what he does is he introduces a third character in that scene, which is like the drunk neighbor yeah. who comes in. Oh, yeah. So you're not sure if, you know. Am I supposed to be pulling relevant information out of this conversation, or is it just uh, extraneous information? Because, right, because you throw the extraneous neighbor yeah, in there, and he's just and doing like, bullshit. Okay, so yeah, that yeah. one doesn't matter. We la- mm-hmm. learn later, but the other stuff was important, and you probably yes. should have been listening to it. Right. Um, and, but that also, uh, uh, he, but that character also gives you information later. That is sort of important to the plot and everything, and you right, don't know. Just right, like, right. do I trust that? It's coming from him. We it's like fucking brilliant. Yeah. <laughs> he's good he's good mm-hmm. hence his career and how much of that was in the original novel i'm not sure i have not read it that is i'm very curious about that okay well one of out. our uh listeners has read it and oh, has a couple right. notes oh nice cool um i love our listeners so the fourth scene basically uh sets up um the this is the instigating incident right mm-hmm. uh Ileana Douglas. what's her character's name find out yep I don't the sister don't, just slipped my mind yep so she is um going to classes as you did back then you know like uh free spirit parents. lisa lisa, lisa. does lisa okay. work lisa seems to sleep in and she lives a carefree life and she <laughs> yeah. goes to classes 
and learns about spiritualism and occultism and uh, right mesmerism, mm -hmm. and that's where this movie is going to set this up. This is like uh, cool. I love that this. <laughs> hobby comes around every couple of decades or so like you know people in victorian times like rich people for fun they would like they would hire hypnotists or they would do live vivisections they would do all sorts of like morbid shit for fun that's how yeah. ouija boards came about i love that the 90s it's like 150 some years later and we're still doing the same shit yeah. again for fun yeah. you know and mesmerize like, me it's like it's just got a new look but it's the same old shit i love yep. it i love parlor that tricks. yeah exactly i love that it always comes always back fun. around and yeah we all love it when a parlor yep. trick works and the whole movie <laughs> <Yes. out of. laughs> so she the 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 thing is i guess she's saying you know i go to this class and there's i do hypnotism or you know my mm -hmm. teacher mm -hmm. does hypnotism and it's a real thing, and everybody's like, ah, you know, as you would at a party. Yeah. Everybody's kind of you know, a little. Oh, I'd be that drunk. guy. I'd be like, yeah, hypnotize me. Yeah. Go for it. See if you can do it. Yo, would you also grab the talk to me hand? <laughs> no, it, well, it depends. If I saw it happen, like in that movie, you see it happen to other yeah. people, and I don't think I, if I saw it happen to other people, I'd be like, Ugh, I don't yeah. know. Yeah, <laughs> but so, if you didn't, you'd, you'd be touching that talk to me hand if you didn't know what it did. If I, well, I mean, they say explained it to you, but you know, true. But uh, I mean, maybe it's more probable if i didn't see it happen to someone else gotcha. then i'd be like so you're down you. for a paranormal the, party the trick huh sure <laughs> because <laughs> right. again noted, because noted. I, oh yeah bring yeah. it on until it happens to me then i'll be like i'm never doing any of this shit again well but, i mean everybody kind of you want to have uh, some kind of confirmation of the you know yeah, the, yeah. The, the this is what i was weird. telling when i told you guys the story about in bad way back in college i went up to the hypnotist stage you know when they bring oh that, yeah and they couldn't hypnotize and they couldn't you do it and they sent me back down yes and i'm just like what the fuck <laughs> you're like i will you, follow your you instructions i will do anything you want me to do you hypnotize yeah. me i'm here i'm uh, but just, you know i don't maybe if you're too skeptical they're just like we can't penetrate yeah, you Yeah, you're not prone to hypnotism i guess huh i guess not. well what i like well, about what <laughs> this movie and i guess i don't recall seeing this before and so this was kind of the thing that like you know when you're like oh your attention really comes alive here within the first 20 minutes mm. they give you the point of view of what the hip the guy who's being hypnotized sees in his mind yeah and in this case she tells him to like close your eyes you know and so the screen goes black and then it's like imagine yourself in a in a theater and so we're in this like big ornate classic movie. Looks palace. like the music box. I yeah. was looking around and be like, "Is it the music box?" No, right. it's, it's a not in Joliet. It is yeah. because the seats are different. Yeah, yeah. they but might have cup holding. It's cool that we actually get to see like a visual of hypnotism instead of just seeing someone talk to someone else with their eyes closed yes. in the room because that's usually how a movie right. shows it. And it is nice to see like what he starts out imagining and he's like and everything because he imagines the theater and everything's painted black and then yeah. the black paint drips down mm -hmm. and everything and then you know all you can see and it keeps changing based on her description. He yeah. starts mm -hmm. out with the base like one of those big old movie palaces and mm -hmm. then the screen people go away and the, the mm -hmm. big curtain comes down and yeah good descriptors and then the visual representation of that and like even the like you paint it black right? yeah, mm -hmm. which, uh, it comes in later yeah, <laughs> but, yeah. yeah it does. Like, ah, nice um so he imagines i well i i think what happens is he has these uh sensory flashes of a disturbing nature mm. they're very fast and then he wakes up and they're like yeah you did a bunch of crazy shit you know while you were out uh, you were crying and doing all this stuff, but that's not really the focus of it. The focus is something has changed in Tom Witzke. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And uh, the doors have been opened and now he, he's going to perceive uh, things that we can't yes. for the rest of the movie. Um, so he begins to hallucinate. He thinks uh, these Vision. violent images that we can't really tell what it is we know there's a there's a girl yeah um that first image they show of like the plastic around her face when he's sitting in the theater See, even spooky. tonight scared the shit mm -hmm. i'm just like oh ugh. Mm -hmm. the imagery the visuals in this just just still unsettling yeah because mm -hmm. there's like we see a tooth you know go flying mm -hmm. out from our point of view the fingernail really yeah. always mm -hmm. just mm -hmm. gets it's like okay there's a brutality here mm -hmm. it's shocking um you know, so we're, we're, you know, it's like, okay, we're talking about murder. Mm -hmm. A girl has been murdered and this is a ghost story. Yeah. Um, I believe it's not very long after this before we actually see a ghost. Yes. Mm -hmm. On the couch. 
That I wasn't that a trailer moment for this movie? Oh yeah, I think so, yeah. yeah. I oh, yeah. I, I, get, I, can I remember, remember that scene like being burned in my brain because yeah. it's such a good jump scare. Like he leans back on the couch and as he leans back, he reveals her sitting there next yep. to him, and then he notices her. See that it. That is what makes certain movies so genius is when they take those jump scares and they flip them on your head a little bit because mm. like um in Insidious, there's a lot of things like that that happen to the characters, but the characters are a step behind the audience so they don't know it's happening, so they don't react right mm, away. Right. So yeah, but this movie, I don't know, the way that whole scene is like edited and shot is really good. Yeah, there's a lot of, I mean, like his camera work and staging and all mm. that, uh, and he, he moves the camera. Mm-hmm. And reveals somebody behind, like, you know, the central figure. Mm -hmm. He does that several times. Right. Yes. Even in dramatic moments, you know, it's like, it's just, I mean, the The, guy, I guess, you know, he studied under De Palma. Right. right, You know? (laughs) But that's what makes, but that's what also makes watching this in Sixth Sense so fun Mm -hmm. is because those camera moves, Mm -hmm. just the way, or at least maybe earlier Shyamalan, Mm -hmm. the way he moved his camera, and maybe I'm thinking more Unbreakable, but he did in The Sixth Sense too, his reveals with camera work, especially when it comes to like the ghosts and everything. Yeah. There's a similarity to it, but this feels like more of a, his was maybe more of a a smoother thing that you weren't supposed to necessarily notice, when in this one it's maybe more purposeful Mm -hmm. in what you're you're supposed to be seeing and a little more jumpy, Mm -hmm. uh, a little more, uh, maybe faster. I think there's more of a kinetic energy to his reveals and mm-hmm. camera work in this. But it's fun to watch them both because they both kind of do that in their reveals. Yeah. That's good. No, it's uh, it's I don't remember who shot the movie, unfortunately. I but, will um, find out for you. So we begin to realize that there is a ghost in the house. Fred the, Murphy. Who? Fred Murphy. This sounds like a fake name. He has worked on over 50 movies. It does. Oh my uh, God. Uh, Hoosiers, The Dead, Secret Window, Secret Window, oh, there you go. Autofocus, Mothman Prophecies. This is another creepy one. Mm-hmm. Uh, the uh, Robin Williams star RV. Oh, oh wow. So there you go. Okay. Uh, the thriller Anamorph with Willem Dafoe. Mm-hmm. Uh, he's a five-time Emmy Award nominee. Okay. There you so go. he shot some well stuff. Done, sir. Um, Budget of twelve million for this one. For this movie, okay. Box I mean, it wasn't was only twenty-three point know, one. Oh, that's yeah. unfortunate. That's, that's not bad. It's double yeah. its budget. I mean, right. that's a win. And mm-hmm. you know, a lot of people that I talked to seem to have seen the movie. Right. So yeah, uh, it did kind of um, you know penetrate the pop culture in some way mm-hmm. even though it was over i'm sure the sixth sense made like a hundred million or, <laughs> right, or more right and academy um, award nominations yeah. for right. picture director mm-hmm. writer and star mm-hmm. yeah um bit of a difference so i guess the dynamic right you're setting up a movie in which uh the working class hero begins to see things that he doesn't necessarily like he's qu- he's not really questioning his sanity his wife is yes mm-hmm. right and his son is like recognizing that daddy also sees ghosts yes mm-hmm. and so it's creating this like weird family dynamic where like the son doesn't understand a lot of the adult world but understands that like dad is you know also seeing things that he sees Dad understands that son is like sharing some of this and mom is like locked out of this. Right. This, I have a question. Do you need this son in this movie? Um, do you, does this character necessary? Cause I feel like you can cut him out completely. Oh, you think so? I, think I don't so. agree with that. Um, I, th- I think there's a lot of Kevin Bacon's having his own paranormal journey separate of his son. I think the, the kid. Son adds- the son, it feels like he's just there to add creepy moments and to k- dump expo for other characters. And I think he provides a key to a number of scenes where, as a screenwriter, you'd be trying to solve, like, you know, how do we get them out of the house for this scene? Or how do we get them to somewhere where, Mm -hmm. you know, the exposition dump guy is going to happen? Or, you know, and having a kid. Right. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, it, it's creepy too. You know, like he's talking to it someone in the like room. It feels like that was and, the primary motive: is that it's creepy, and then we'll reverse engineer everything from that. I mean, maybe, but I think it worked. Even if it, that was yeah. the way, I think that works because mm-hmm. they, it, it, it. I think it creates such such goodness comes out of it, in my opinion. Like the the babysitter part, mm-hmm. where he's the one who ends up suggesting it based on right. Samantha, and it ends up being her sister. But it comes from the kid. Mm-hmm. 
the suggestion of that little revelation kind of I think but adds does to that it. impact the story at all? Yeah, it introduces the whole family character. Right, yeah. but and that you doesn't get the, all this back, lead so I to guess... the unraveling of the mystery, though. I think everything yeah. eventually leads to the unraveling. Yeah, of the it's mystery. like I I needed that. I guess that the the babysitter was the sister of the uh, the, mm-hmm. the girl who's mm-hmm. gone missing because yeah. that you know then we're like oh there's a girl who's gone missing. Mm-hmm. It's leading us toward her identity. You know. Um, yeah, I guess like how else would we have got into that? That's I guess you could figure out a different way to do it, but mm-hmm. it also it's a great and and I th- it's a great tension builder, and I think that's different from the creepiness factor right. yeah. because you uh, because we know there's something going on with the kid, and so we are introduced to the kid who's got something going on, mm-hmm. and our two technically more main characters, Kevin Bacon and Catherine Irby, aren't involved in that yet, and so you're sitting there wondering like when did they get drawn right. more into this and everything. I guess looking at it 25 years on, this feels heck of having like a I, creepy I, little kid be the conduit oh, for yeah. the ghost story. Mm. Oh, like, yeah. I think I'm coming at this of like, I've seen this for 25 years now, so it's like, I, I get it. I'll say sense, that's it. Yeah. Because, because I, Sixth yeah. Sense made yeah. it like a cliche. Like yeah. every movie it felt like after the second, yeah. you know, the ring. Yeah. Right. Right. Because yeah. we've seen the original Japanese ring and Love that it. kid is not the Sixth Sense kid. Right. But right. in the remake, he is. Right. You know, it's like they just kept doing it. But then you go like, well, this was actually written, you know, yeah. way, way right. 50 Lord years. Exactly. But, yeah, but yeah. I think it's that viewpoint it's, it's, that it's, is just yeah. like, mm-hmm. even watching something that we like and, you know, uh, again, uh, trying to travel back and trying to do yes. our own little time traveling yeah. back to 1999 mm. where it wasn't hack. Yeah. And you're just like, oh, that's fucking creepy. Right. Especially when that one point is just like. When they're just like, what did, what did you say? You talked to the man, he's like, talk to me. Yeah, like, yeah, that was, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. But Ugh. he never comes back again, though. That's just that one moment of that. It's just, Ugh. it's so. Breadcrumbs, it's, it's a bunch of breadcrumbs <laughs> coming from this kid, you know? It is, but, I, yeah. but I, well, I like that. But I also like the dynamic of the kid has a clear, much better flashlight as a scribe letter. Yeah. But the kid has a clearer view of all this stuff. Mm-hmm. But because he's so young, there's the disconnect of like, if, Kevin Bacon could see that clearly. He'd be able to solve this thing right off the mm-hmm. bat. Like, I, I like that dynamic where the kid could solve it if he was older and you know, yeah. right. ahead, just aware of more of, of what was happening and all mm-hmm. that stuff. Well, that's why they have room for a sequel. Starring we'll talk Rob about Lowe. it. We'll talk. It's Rob okay. Lowe. Is there a sequel not playing. To this? Rob Lowe, 2007 <laughs> sequel. Stir of Echoes: Homecoming. Is that is that for real? Uh, yes, yeah, so I think it was a sci-fi oh, movie. Mike, watch sci-fi the trailer. trailer. Yeah. Sci-fi yeah. channel. Watch the trailer. <laughs> But Jake, yeah. the kid from this, has grown up in that as like a yeah, secondary co starring yeah. character. Which didn't, so like, did Insidious take that same idea and make it better? Because mm-hmm. remember, Probably. Insidious did like, the kid's going to college now. And I, I. Oh, did they do that? I, oh, that came That's out the, like two years ago. Yeah. And I, I, I about, saw the first one. I, oh, seen the rest. I about threw up when I realized I was old enough to watch the Insidious <laughs> kid go to college. Yeah. <laughs> That was the oh, yeah, Patrick Wilson the, directed one. Yes. Oh, because that's the And they Iron brought Man back the kid, same right? kid. Yes, yeah, they brought yeah, back yeah. that yeah. kid to be like, Insidious <laughs> is going to college. And I was like, I'm not old Insidious enough for this. Goes to college. Yeah. <laughs> Ernest used to go. Now Insidious yeah. goes. That's funny. So um, I guess, uh, yeah, Dad is seeing things. What does he see? He sees. Uh, you didn't tell me this was about the Iraq War. Oh, yeah. Oh, a, oh, my yeah. God. I yeah. did not expect that. Stir of Echoes, The Homecoming. A soldier like returns Lowe, like, home from the Iraq war to be haunted by visions of the dead. Wow. Rob Lowe, like, kills a couple people. Yikes. Like, is, is kind of the major plot line. Of, Tatiana of Maslany is in this, too. Like, is a she? pre-fame Tatiana Very Maslany. Very young yeah. Tatiana Maslany? Yeah. Probably the ghost this is of 2007, the... 2007, yeah. Yeah, I, saw, I watched the trailer. It looks horrible. I well, because that. I think this movie did really well on, on video. Like, right. Even though yes. if it didn't... Because that's, records, if it didn't that's do where well. I saw it. This was a yeah. big video rental. I remember this being very popular on yeah. video. Um, yeah, we watched it tons when yeah. it came out. Oof. This was a big rental movie, yeah. Yep. So, um, there... Um, I think, like, some, some of the, the sequences that um, he sees a ghost in his living room... Uh, he eventually sees, um, the visions like there's get this more whole complex deja vu. Yeah. yeah. Uh, that's actually the turning point. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Well, he sees, you know, they, there's this whole thing about the babysitter. They mm-hmm. have a babysitter come over. He sees this like red blinding, uh, uh what you know, does that mean? 
that danger, danger, a warning, or something is going to happen. Because there was danger. lots of like breadcrumbs of what it could possibly be. Yeah, and so then it ends up directing alert. him toward yeah. like where right. she is. And I know. like the first time you see that screen flash red, I'm just like, uh, it's, it's still a bit of a jump scare. Yeah, it, it yeah. Is a jump scare, but also just the whatever they did for the specific coloring of it. Yeah, mm-hmm. it's it just looks like, good. oh, it looks great. Yeah, and you're just like, oh, and it's freaky. And you're just like, wait, what's going on? And you got a chase scene because she takes the kid. I'd be remiss if I didn't mention she's Paris Geller from Gilmore Girls, right. which started like the next year. So this was like uh, right on the cusp of her breakout. Which Paris Geller? Paris Geller is her character's name okay. in Gilmore Girls. L- Liza Wiles, the actress, which she's like a Shonda, Shonda Land regular. And, okay. Uh, she was on How to Get Away with Murder, like every episode. That's of that. where I've yes. seen her. Okay, <laughs> a ton of stuff. Gotcha. Yeah, lots of she like, was like Shondaland the, TV okay. and lots of Amy Sherman Palladino TV. Yes, I'm so, like I yeah. know I've seen her yep. somewhere. Mm-hmm. How to Get Away with yep. Murder is the one I saw. Her. Okay, yep. I think that's how we learn that there is this girl named Samantha, yes. or because this is Debbie, her sister. Yes. Uh, she steals um, Jake and runs off to the um, uh, train station. So what's her plan here? She's gonna go well, to her mom and say her mom like, the, works ki- at the, train the kid station. says right. he see he talks to Samantha in his house. You know, like, I think still be- kidnapped a kid. No matter. Yeah, that's very true. And she even yeah. admits in the She's movie. She's distraught. She thinks yeah. her sister. Something's happened to her sister. I think that eventually their next stop is the. Pol- I think they would eventually go to the yeah. police with yeah. the kid. Yeah, mom but, would have taken him to. The, and right. then they were but, like, but, we're yeah. gonna go to the house. But also, but she is like a sixteen. She's a kid. Yeah, eighteen year old kid who's just in shock because her sister's been missing for six months. Right. And suddenly, this little kid is just like, "You talk to Samantha, my sister, right? Yeah. In where? Yeah. In my house? In your yeah. house? Yeah. yeah. Oh my god. Fr- yeah, I'd have freak a freak out too. Yeah. I might kidnap a kid and run away. I think there's um there's a block party scene. Like right, the, I mean, that uh, presages um, the deja vu scene where Kevin yes. Bacon wakes up and imagines his neighbor. Oh, it's because he, yeah, because after that, he's like at the block party, like, mm-hmm. hey, you, you know, this girl, Samantha Kovac, and he's asking his and all neighbors. The neighbors are weird about it. Yeah. yeah. It's like, oh, yeah, I, I think I heard something about it. But they're it. involving, yeah. like, you know, like, hey, you know, brings the kid over. Bring their, you know, their, their, the sons over. The teenage sons, you know, mm-hmm. who are stars and going somewhere in life. Because we were going to the basketball or the football game earlier, right? right. Mm-hmm. So that's where, you know. Right. And um, so. I think because of that agitation, right, that he's agitated the the folks that we yeah. later find are involved in this, like the next scene has to kind of like, okay, so how are we going to uh, keep going with this? He imagines his neighbor is over at his house saying like, you know, they're going to kill you, you and Tommy, you and Maggie you both. And, Maggie both. Yep. and this is a, this decent, a decent neighborhood. neighborhood. Mm-hmm. Uh, Kevin Dunn's great in this. <laughs> and then uh, there is a, a suicide attempt by one of the boys. Uh, disturbing. But Super we don't. This disturbing. always disturbs. Just because the just the because he walks into it and he's like, he's like, you want to see what I got? Like this is a teenage kid, but he's talking like an eight year old. You want to see what I got? It's pretty cool. And it's just like, and he's got a gun, and you just like the uneasiness of this scene still bothers me. Mm-hmm. Bothered me then. And- the thing that all these movies always play off of, or all these situations, is like that you recognize that there is something off and something like you should get out of this but because of you're still trying to be polite and not just turn around and run away yes because you're afraid that then they will attack you yes so you're like how can i appease them to back off that happened several times in this movie yeah Yeah. (laughs) that's the entire movie right there being too polite to save your life yeah exactly Um, just run away folks yep so um yeah, because he he ends up seeing the scene twice and tries to like save this kid, right. and then but, just, uh, the, but it happens the kid, anyway. The kid in the the premonition shoots himself in the chest, but just the rubbing of the blood all over his face and the, mm-hmm. the sound work in this movie is also like great because there's, um, it, it's not a spot, uh, there's not a spotlight on some of the sound work in this. It's just there, like you hear, um, uh, the, there's whispers and there's moaning and there's kind of gr- you know the sound that the the. Uh, the shadow ghosts make. In, yeah. There, there's like a mm-hmm. tiny oh, bit ghost? of that in the background mm-hmm. in yeah. ghost. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Just, there's a little bit of that in the background during certain scenes and everything, but again, they don't make it the focus. So you mm-hmm. hear it and you're like, do you guys hear that? And then it goes away. Yeah. And, and the surround mix is like, pretty, yeah. it, it, pretty Oh, it's goodness. great. Um, the wife at the same time is kind of trying to come to grips with like what's going on with her husband. Right. She ends up meeting, 
uh, the character who will explain our sage black man. Yes. Yes. Right. Yeah. Um, because I did get uh, the shining vibe out of this, right? Mm-hmm. Where it's like the the kid recognizes the older guy who also has the shining. He's got the mm-hmm. shinin. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, that guy is like, you know, I can explain this to you know. I recognize that the kid has it, and you don't have it, mom. Maybe dad has it. Mm-hmm. And like, yeah, send him to the secret meeting of the shining it's people. It's a good thing she knew exactly what he was talking about because none of his words really make sense. Right. Yeah. X ray eyes. The yeah. X ray. Yeah. Not, Not you, you though. Mm-hmm. Dad Daddy maybe. Though. And she's like, yeah, my husband's going through some shit. Mm-hmm. And she's like, tell daddy to call me later. I'm like, anything, this out of context is right. like, are you trying to pick up the dad? Right. They're like it's a little it's yeah, a little not as clear. My, yeah. You know, this my, alley come to my place. <laughs> and yeah, it's a little weird like it almost feels like maybe you should explain yourself a little bit more of what's going on. Yeah, but, but they all know like that there's something right, going that, on but here. But that's that, but that's what I like about it is because she gets it. She's mm-hmm. like, "Okay, I understand this is part of the whole thing even though I don't understand the whole thing. Mm-hmm. This is something of it." And I like that. I like that they just kind of understand it and go with it. And I guess his uh character this is Neil, right? He's a Chicago Bye, policeman. His name is Neil. Uh, he's able to say like, you know, basically I think what all of these ghost stories kind of come down to is that the ghost wants something. Mm -hmm. And if you don't do it, she's getting angrier, you know, and she's never going to go away. If you don't do this thing, she wants, what does she want? Dig. (laughs) I mean, dig. Dig. (laughs) That was the part where I'm like, okay, he's sitting there. He's strumming away in his guitar. Mm-hmm. He's trying to figure out this tune that the kid's humming and mm-hmm. how it's connected. And we're sitting there going like, yeah. I remember when I saw it, and I am a big fan of the song, Paint mm-hmm. It Black. Mm-hmm. Yes. But I was sitting there going like, man, that does sound familiar. Right. <laughs> what is that, you know? Covered by Gob for this movie. Yeah. Who? Gob. No idea. Okay. No. I mean, it was good. It's the Rolling mm-hmm. Stones painted yeah, black. It's, yeah, a, yeah. it's a good song. They painted the interior of the, yeah, uh, the was, theater black. Yeah, it was the uh, uh, theme song of Twisted Metal Black. <laughs> <laughs> of course uh, it was. A, a game uh, from also this era. That yeah. fits right in. It was also the theme song to a TV show called Tour of Duty, which uh, oh, wow. starred uh, Miguel Nunez. Oh, they must have changed it. Yeah. For, they changed it then for... Um, <laughs> What? For later purposes, because that is not the theme song what? when it aired on the my license? channel. No, huh? When it really? aired on my yeah, I don't know. Oh shit, that's how I heard that song. Really? Was, oh, I think they yeah, uh, I think Black music clip. A... No. We'll really? have to we'll okay, we'll go back and look. Oh, that or I've been uh, you know, Shazam. We'll go look. Okay. Because I can't I would have I think I I watch a lot of that show, unfortunately. But yeah. Oh damn. Okay, well that's the news. We'll to let me. you know, uh dear Brandon, uh, okay. if that is indeed what is currently airing. So um I guess Tom at this point, uh, yeah, he has... Uh, kid has been shot and gone to the hospital. Lisa, um, not his kid, the, the no, one of the, the teenager yeah, football, the teenagers. you know, the, yeah. And so he is like, I want you to shut the door he goes back in to my Lisa mind or whatever. Like, I don't want to see this shit anymore. Whatever door you open in my head, I want you to shut it. That so she hypnotizes right. him, but uh, he sees uh, a message from Samantha Dig, dig, mm-hmm. and I like that Sean points out, like, well, it could be metaphorical. <laughs> dig, dig more, exactly, right. it could. <laughs> yeah, so it's very dig vague. for information. Right. Dig for any sort of number of yeah. things. He takes it extremely literally. Very little, Close and it is like someone who's. We've all been renters at one point in our life. Holy shit, this guy not Ooh. getting his deposit back. No. Like, lucky if he doesn't get evicted for what he does to this house that he does not own. And his, rents, his landlord lives across yes. the street. Right? And as like, we're yelling this out, so is the landlord. Yes, <laughs> yes. It's a fucking rented house. Well, because yeah. he starts digging up the backyard, as you do, I guess, right. dig. Which just gave me flashbacks backyard. to frailty. I was yeah. like, ooh, oh, this yeah. is big frailty energy of yeah, like, of I'm on a delusional digging journey, you know? Yeah, like, we gotta yeah. dig. Yeah. Okay. We gotta find uh, that thing. So if you we know? come over and Colin is digging, <laughs> digging <up. laughs> well, run. You remember, Sean, you remember that one time we came over and Colin wasn't here and we thought maybe we'd see his feet in the hallway? 
<laughs> we, dear, dear Braylor, there was a time we thought Colin was dead uh, in his yep, house. Yep, Sean and I were like, at what point do we kick the door in? You right. know, right. Wait, 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 we're looking my feet windows. were not in the hall. No, no, I no, forgot no. there this was a freak show no, that no. night. No, yeah. we, I wasn't we, home. We just were <laughs> anxious people making up worst case scenario, and we were like hyping each other up in our anxiety. Yeah, so, we, we really yeah. were. Yeah. And, and let me tell you that not 30 seconds went by that we arrived at this house. We're like, Colin's dead. You were looking in all the windows. I was looking in the Weird place to go. I was like, calling him. I was calling he's not him. home. He's I mean, dead inside oh no, the house. I go there as a joke, yeah. but then it started to become more real. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I'm trying to call you. You're not answering. And then uh, Holly's not here yet. So Sean and I are just spiraling. But, but yeah, because it's yeah. always my, because I, I always end up coming to the house. Sometimes I'm like, and if I'm the first one here, I'm like, am I supposed to be here? Are we doing this tonight? <laughs> Always wondering if I've got the right yeah. day. Yeah. yeah. But yeah, if we ever come and see Colin digging a hole in the backyard, we should probably just turn around and back yeah, out, yeah, right? Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Just pretend like we didn't see and it. And it's not like that won't happen, because he's, right. he's dug lines from his we saw house him to his garage. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So yeah the over possibility there. is there. Yes, yeah. <laughs> um, so there's a Colin, lot of, what there's, ghosts are you seeing? There's a, <laughs> I mean, in this basement, you know. Why are they shitting on your garage? Yep. Yeah, seriously. <laughs> Colin is a shit ghost, yeah. I figured out what that was. Uh, it, 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 that's yeah. not so, story. Um, the story. Uh, that's on the Patreon. We'll yeah, right, yeah. Yeah. Um, so the digging goes from outside digging holes to uh, inside. Yeah. I can't remember what brings him inside. Oh, it's like, I mean, they do set water. this up. It's like he's trying to get the water on it and the spigot, yeah. Yeah. you know, and so he goes inside and then he's like, oh, I'm supposed to be here digging because there's an argument with uh Catherine irby at a certain point he's like i think we both know what i'm trying to do mm -hmm. the question is where because yeah. he doesn't know where he's supposed to dig he just had knows he's supposed to dig so but this this i guess goes to his character this set, this goes back to it's the echo of that scene that they set up at the beginning right an echo, an yeah, echo. A stir of echoes. because yeah. he's right. like mm -hmm. gripped in this fever of mm -hmm. like i i'm supposed to dig i know what i'm it's digging for i just don't know where it is he's like this is the most important thing mm -hmm. that's ever happened to me in my life and you're asking me to stop yep. i'm not gonna stop i'm not gonna stop and he's and, and she has this kind of poignant response i thought was like you know it's like you're saying your life is ordinary and your stupid life, it's right. like, it's our stupid life. And I don't think it's stupid. And I'm like, this is like good uh, character relationship drama stuff mm -hmm. that they're working in there, you know? Yeah. Because um, he's having like uh, solo as a person feelings. And he's got to remember that that affects the person he's yeah. with and everything. Yeah. And that's the relationship thing. But that's what makes this good. He's got this, you know, he's been chosen. He's got this. Yeah. He has to deliver. He's got to do. And so he's not ordinary anymore. He has this uh, this thing that he has to accomplish. Uh, it's a good thing he's in shape. Yeah. Right? Because Jesus, Seriously. his sinewy body. Mm -hmm. She is called away uh, at this point in the plot because there is- I do is like this little moment where, because she gets uh, a fax in 1999. <laughs> yes. 1999, folks. So she gets a fax from her brother saying that her grandmother is going back into the, uh, going back into the hospital. She's apparently sick. And when she explains that to Tom, he's like, my grandmother's going back in the hospital. And he's like, Oh no, she like he it's knows. It's psychic, yeah, yeah. He knows. Just like, yeah. Ooh. You think like I'm? Uh, I think every probably every note from her character is right, but she has seen a lot of extra paranormal shit. Right, the kid talking. She watched her husband probably run ten blocks to save their kid, not knowing like cell phones. Basically, don't exist at this right, point. Right, exactly. Yeah. And he ran ten blocks to find their kid at a mm -hmm. train station, just right. knowing it, and a few other things, and just like ah, maybe mm -hmm. he's on to something. Mm -hmm. But he is acting still crazy. He is digging holes in the backyard. Yeah, but I mean, what you know? Okay, you're digging holes to find a body, right? With your son, which is there. what the understanding is, I think. And I think that just skeeves her out. You yeah. know, she's just like, "What are you doing?" Our son is right there. You know. And she's like, call the police. I like that scene. He's like, okay, all right, you know, practice that. What would that sound like out loud? <laughs> I, I just want to hear it. Seriously. Yeah. <laughs> I, that was the most I think I, I identified in the angerness. Like, say it out loud. I'd right. like to hear it just mm -hmm. to see what it sounds like. Mm -hmm. Like, I understood him in that moment. But then, because movies of this type have to do this, we have to get her out of the picture. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And so she has to go off to attend the funeral, and mm -hmm. she takes uh, the kid Jake with her. Mm -hmm. Um, 
And so that leaves Kevin Bacon alone in the house where he goes and rents, uh, you know, like a power a jackhammer, yeah, a jackhammer <laughs> yeah. to go at the cement floor of the house. That he does not own. He's Right. He is using a jackhammer on a cement floor of a house he does not own. See, Crazy. as I was saying Crazy. during the movie, it's like these are concerns yes. that only relate to the working class oh, audience. Absolutely. So like, this absolutely. is like the money pit, right? Really, for yeah. Yes, it really <laughs> is. Yeah. You're right, because all we're thinking about is like, how are you gonna pay for that? Yeah. How are you gonna fix that? Yeah. Because he, he hasn't yeah. been working, right? Yes. It's like he's taking time he's off. He's taking all his sick days. And we're yep. told what it's eight hundred dollars a month for this brownstone. <laughs> a nice brownstone. Yeah, three story building. Yep. Yeah. And he's ruining it. And yeah. He's, he's ruining it. Yeah. And then he's ruining. digging the shit out of this thing. Kicking buckets in the windows yeah. and shit. That, yeah. Do we know was that supposed to happen that way? That I, scene I, I, I felt like, lucky. I feel like Kevin Bacon always wanted to kick the bucket. Yeah. But I feel like he just got lucky. I think he got I think lucky. He got yeah. lucky. Yeah. And it's yeah. like shit. He could just yeah. kick it this way. Yeah. Kick it that way. Right. He kicked it right into the window. But Beautiful. it's perfect because like she slams the door and cracks the glass. He yeah. breaks the. It's just their whole the whole Everything thing is shattering. deteriorating. Yes. Um, it's all coming down. And in the basement, he uh, eventually gets to swing it with a, uh, a a pickaxe or something like that, mm -hmm. and knocks a hole in the wall. The wall. Yeah. See. This is why we need specifications on dig. On dig. dig where? Yeah. Because what if he hadn't hit the wall? Would he just keep going down, down, down forever? Like yeah, she, probably. Yeah, you know, and he, like, yeah, and he might have just dug himself it. into into like silliness. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So be nah, more specific he, but, with your ghost directions. You know yeah, he was always meant to find that body. He was meant he to was find good. that body. Yeah, he was meant to find true. that body. It's true. So he discovers the body of Samantha. Yep. Um. But the audience may still need, and I, I like that these movies always kind of um, orchestrate this. Is like you know him by touching her gets mm -hmm. to see like her point of view of what actually happened, mm -hmm. and we uh, find out that um, his landlord, mm -hmm. who has a line earlier about like when I take off the uniform, like I do this and that, and I became a landlord and I have mm -hmm. five properties. I'm like, was he a cop? Right. He has cop energy. He's got it, no, no. He has the cop mustache. Yeah, yeah. that man is a he's cop. Either a cop, cop or he's yeah. a fireman yeah. or something like. He's yeah. you know one yeah. of. Those. Um, it and, was in backdraft. Yes, <laughs> yeah. yeah. And Kevin Dunn, like it's their kids are these mm -hmm. high school jocks, and they tried to rape this girl. Mm -hmm. Oh, did we say it's Jennifer Morrison? Yeah, from yeah. you know everything you know. House, Morrison, you know, House and uh, what, once a once upon a time was the show. Oh, she was. In she was oh, yeah. yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. I forgot about that. Yeah. that was such a big. The thing. show was on for a while. Oh, yeah, because yeah, I remember off. her as and she was in. I, I've watched mm -hmm. all the seasons of House. Oh, yeah, I've seen all the houses, and this was pre House and. And then, yeah, she went on to, right, to that. Yeah. Um, so, um, and this is Debbie's sister. This is Samantha. Yes. This is the this victim. Is the ghost. And what happens is, yeah, it's one of those scenes where the guys are trying to attack her and she's screaming. And so one of I'm them. I'm going to get a tooth knocked out in the struggle. Ugh, we get this is the fingernail. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I hate oh, this scene. Mm -hmm. it's, it's very brutal. tense. Very tense. Just makes you feel bad from start to finish. Mm -hmm. The POV plastic going over the face is a lot. That's that's a lot. The mm -hmm. thing that may uh, one of the things that the the slow zoom out, mm -hmm. which that feels like they figured out what dying feels like. Yeah, right. Yeah. It's good. Oh, it's, yeah. good. It's, it's good because yeah. it's just like it's that last shot through the eyes. Yeah, slowly goes into the distance. Mm -hmm. I'm like, that's what dying is. Ugh. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's like you're still aware. Right, and right. it's just you know, slowly going away. Right. Yeah. Uh, right. yeah. Um, Ugh. and so we're like, okay, the kids, uh, well, specifically the one kid, the other kid is culpable. Uh, actually he's the one who kills her, right? Mm -hmm. the, the, the one who puking who... and feels bad about it. Yeah. But yeah, yeah. The, one the one who shot himself. The one who shot himself. He's the one who held the plastic down. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, so, uh, Tom then is like, okay, well, I'm going to go talk to the dad of the kid who's like in the hospital because mm -hmm. he shot himself. And at least tell him that, like, I'm going to call the police. This yeah. is what happens. I want you to know. He's a straight up dude. Mm -hmm. He's going to tell him. Yeah. And uh, Kevin Dunn comes back with him Bold to the house. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you Cause know. Because how, how do you, like, I know that Tom's been through a lot at this yeah. point, And he's not exactly probably thinking straight. Because if you sat down and thought about it, like, just take 10 minutes to sit down and think about this. And you tell the dad of the kid who just shot himself, like, w probably why he shot himself mm -hmm. and what he's guilty of. And you don't have any evidence, really, other than I mean, you have a body, but you, you will eventually you will eventually have the proof. It's yeah. down there, but yeah. you don't like right. you got to prove it. But also right. the fact that like 
you don't know how that dad's going to react it, because it's you a are risky move. You're yeah. telling a dad that your son is done. Mm-hmm. Everything that you've put into this mm-hmm. and the child that you love is done. Mm-hmm. And that is a risky business to go into this, mm-hmm. to tell a dad that. Because you don't know, you don't know how parents are going to react right. when yeah. you tell them something about their kids. Mm-hmm. So that's already tense right off the bat, especially when he's like, Wait one second. Mm-hmm. Just like, okay. Yeah, I know. Wait here for a second. Ooh. Like he's calling the other guy, right? right? Like right. I knew that was. Right. I think you, you see the pan past the landlord's but he house though. and the light comes on. But he doesn't call the other guy. You don't think so? No, because the son saw him in the basement. Oh right, that's right. Mm-hmm. They they they, they square yeah. that up, which I thought was a little too much, but whatever. Yeah, mm-hmm. he happened to be there right at the time. Yeah, when, I didn't. Uh, yeah, I, I didn't need the, the son body. looking through a window and yeah. seeing him and all that. I uh, sussing it out may have been better, but. Well, it leads to a tense, uh, I mean, it's well orchestrated, right? Because um, the wife, oh, shit, I forgot her uh, character's name. Catherine Irby or the other one? Catherine Irby. Uh, Yep. Yep. But Catherine Irby's character is like, I'm only an hour away. I'm going to come back and get you tonight, Mm -hmm. you know, whatever. Maggie. Uh, Maggie. Mm -hmm. Yep. So she's coming back. This is like Pet Cemetery, right? Mm-hmm. You're, you're bringing the wife back. And right. You're like, oh, shit. The stakes <laughs> right. are going up. The kid, the psychic kid, doesn't want to come back because he's scared of uh, the feathers. And yes. we're like, what mm-hmm. reference is that? But it's right. cool and creepy. There's something with the feathers. And he's like, you know, don't forget your bag. She has a knife mm-hmm. in the bag. We mm-hmm. didn't, you know, yeah. remember that from earlier. Right. The kid is all feeling without the ability to explain yep. it. Right. Yep. Right. So they all end up at this house. Uh, I guess the the situation is right. Kevin Dunn's like, you know, I feel bad. I'm I got a gun. Uh, get out of here. I'm gonna kill myself. And then the real bad guy is the uh the the landlord, yeah, right? And his son, yeah. And his son, and because uh, the apple doesn't fall far from the tree, I guess you're supposed to take it. It's like these guys, and he is like encouraging his son to like drink the 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 booze. Mm-hmm. It'll make it easier because we're coming over here to kill this guy because, right. you know, we're our hand is forced. You know, <laughs> we have right. to kill him to cover up our crime. But that's also a kid who just feels like he's been under his dad's thumb. Yeah. Like, like his dad's right. hard on him mm-hmm. coaching sports and shit. Like his dad is hard on him probably. And so this is another like the intimidation part of this and then throwing him the ooh. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yep, it's like so. We're gonna do this. We're you know we gotta. You know, yeah, it's to protect you and to protect us. And you know, it's just right, yeah. You can imagine, you can hear yeah. that conversation that happened before right. that. It's like this is this, this will keep our family safe. The yep. bullshit you would say at this point. So they attack Tom, but uh, Catherine Irby shows up. Maggie shows up yep. and interrupts her. And then they attack her. And then uh, there's a bunch of gunplay at the end. But Kevin Foot Dunn, stabbing and uh, a keys to the face and yeah. But Kevin Dunn, actually, we thought he had killed himself in the basement because we heard a shot. He right. shows up and plugs uh, the kid and then the dad and the dad. Yep. Mm-hmm. And then he says that line, mm-hmm. you know, they were going to kill you, Tommy, mm-hmm. yep. you and Maggie. Both they mm-hmm. were like, oh, shit, he had a psychic premonition of right. this moment. <laughs> he's like cold. That's cold blooded murder. Mm-hmm. So he's like excusing what his son did. Right. You know, it's like his son had his whole life in front of him. But it was a mistake. This though, mm-hmm. this is this cold is, blooded. This is, right. this is purposeful. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Yeah. That so, delineation is a little. Right. It's just like, but that's mm-hmm. that's just tr- that's just someone trying to reassure themselves that what they're doing. Yeah. Is yeah, yeah. Right. Exactly. He's, he's going mm-hmm. away. Right. Yeah. He, oh, yeah. <laughs> right. He's, he's already away. Yeah. He's right. going away. Um. And the movie ends, I guess, with the uh, family. Leaving possibly Chicago. I know, right. uh, don't leave Chicago. Yeah. Uh, I do like the the hand touch mm-hmm. between them. Yeah, Again, it's, it's the best relationship mm-hmm. in the movie. And right. I like them. Yeah, and you want them to They're be. They're still okay. strong and, yes. and right. good together. But then the drive away, and it's just a build up of voices and mm-hmm. echoes, and the kid just keeps it's the stir of echoes, mm-hmm. and he just covers his ears. Mm-hmm. As I like that he's not like. It's not a pain to him. It's just like, mm, nope, don't want to hear it. Like, mm-hmm. he's just deciding he doesn't want to hear it. Yeah. Like, he doesn't grimace or anything. It's just like he hears a lot. It's the sensory. Eventually, like, he'll learn to block it out, control it, what have you. But he hears, I mean, he's passing houses where he's hearing all this shit. And yeah, he knows all what's, the dead. Right, or, or, or just the, the bad stuff that's happened in each home as you pass it. Mm-hmm. And just creepy. Oh. And you're like, oh, it's overwhelming. And it's, yeah. Yeah. 
And that's so uh, the yeah, echoes that, were stirred. Then we cut yeah. to, to to black. That's mm-hmm. it. Mm-hmm. <laughs> All right. Well, we are going to uh, review the movie individually. We're going to tell you what we thought of it and whether you should watch it. Um, but first, we're going to read some of your mail. Oh, and yeah. in order to do that, we're going to have to summon our mailman. His name's Igor. Bring us the mail. Masters, masters, the mail. I've got the mail. So many letters. Our followers are rising, rising. Why, thank you, Igor. Thank you, sir. Do you think he can either be hypnotized or has the ability to hypnotize? Mm. Actually, or both? If he were the mesmerist, I've yeah. seen this. If he opens his shirt, <laughs> his nipples are those spinning, oh, those just, oh, the black okay. and white spinning gotcha. thing. So okay. yeah, don't look at his nipples. Don't look at his nipples. nipples. Okay, I've made that mistake. Yeah. Don't look at his nipples, ladies and gentlemen. Yes. He'll be transfixed. Yep. Mm-hmm. Um, we should let the good folks at home know how they can participate on this interactive portion of our show by following along on Facebook. Facebook.com slash Saturday Freak Show. Or X. At Sat Freak Show. Or email. Saturday Freak Show at Yahoo.com. Should we start uh, 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 doing Blue Sky? Okay. Should we, do we, should we, we have to it? take another one? Should we another move one. over to Blue Sky? Mastodon. Oh, no, threads. God, we are <laughs> yeah, We're on threads. threads. That's right. We oh, got God. Yeah. All right. Yeah, Actually, we're doing... Pretty good on okay, Threads. We have a right. bigger th- following on Threads than we do on X right okay. now. Oh, shit. Well, fuck X. Going to Threads. Uh, oh, so on we're threads. also on, well, we welcome all comers. Uh, wherever you can find us, <laughs> yeah, but we like, are yeah. on Threads and Instagram at Saturday Night Freak Show. About tonight's movie, Stir of Echoes, Nelson Nascimento writes in and says, this movie was unfortunately overshadowed by the sixth sense and lost in the mix, but overall, the better of the two. Again. I love it. I love that the pendulum is swinging. I love when people are like, actually, the 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 like uh, lesser known version is better. I, I love th- that. This has happened to all of like the double release movies, like uh, oh, yeah. Arm- Armageddon and uh, Deep Impact. Yeah, it's yeah, just, exactly. like, Armageddon was the big one, but Deep yeah, Impact was right. the one that was actually <laughs> really good. Right. Volcano and Dante's Peak. Yeah. <laughs> oh, all right. Uh, I would say Volcano. Don't let me forget that Dante's Peak is on the list. Oh God, <laughs> that stupid grandma in that movie. God, that's <laughs> she saved them house. all. Oh, Michaela, she jumped out of the boat into the acid water yeah, and saved them all. She was an idiot. <laughs> uh, she shouldn't have been up in the yeah, cabin. Yeah, like, exactly. She was an leave. idiot. Yeah, yeah I agree. We I know had no empathy for too much about Dante's, Dante's Peak, Peak that we're, yeah. we're calling this. It was too on TV easily. all the time. <laughs> all the up. Pierce Brosnan. Yeah. It's Jaws. Yeah, I get, but less okay, interesting. We'll talk about that. Later. Okay, we'll talk about that. Uh, Mike Welch says uh, this one had a lot of com- connections for me. My father worked for the Bell System as a oh, telephone nice. company, right, yeah. and my family lived on the South Side of Chicago. I believe the book is very different, and the sequel with Rob Lowe was not very good. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, Michael Whitaker says, as a resident of Philadelphia, I'm supposed to like The Sixth Sense more, but this movie has always been my favorite out of the two. The book is kind of bland in comparison to the movie. The basic premise still happens, but it takes place in California the kid isn't a psychic and the ghost is just the dead mistress of one of the other characters it oh. reads like a very oh. long dry twilight zone episode considering it's richard matheson i guess that makes sense right yeah. the movie actually gives the story some personality that's, that's cool. interesting um funny i forgot of course the sixth sense was in philadelphia pennsylvania yeah. where he should right something. But also the only other city that has an elevated train. Yeah. Uh, the only other yes. city. Yeah. The similarities are astounding. <laughs> yeah, seriously. Uh, last week we watched a movie called Dagon. Um, yeah. How are the fish people? It was pretty. I, I had a good time with it. I liked it. I liked it. Yeah. The creature work looked great. Yeah. yeah. Uh, on our social media, I don't think we mentioned this on the show. We said th- that Stuart Gordon had been trying to make the movie as the shadow over Innsmouth in the 90s. But what we didn't say is that he recruited uh, both Dick Smith and Bernie Wrightston, the illustrator, oh. to provide concept art. Nice. Uh, and we put some of that on our oh, social media. Oh, that was the picture. Mm-hmm. Okay. Yeah. So oh, the uh, Davy Jones looking yeah. motherfucker. Yeah. With the yeah. Yeah. Face. Yeah. Uh, Ken Kenny Kenneth says uh, Bernie <laughs> Wrightston was the goat. Uh, Bernie Wrightston, if you're a fan of Swamp Thing, obviously you saw yes. like a lot of uh, Bernie okay. Wrightston's yep. illustrations. I just love the name, mm-hmm. Ken Kenny Kenneth. Yeah, Ken Kenny Kenneth. Mm-hmm. Uh, Jeremy Luke says, I need to watch that one again. I saw it when it was brand new, and my knowledge of Lovecraft was super limited. Mm-hmm. Okay. Yeah. Like, yeah, you should yeah. see it again. I mean, yeah. it's a decent adaptation, mm-hmm. it's, it's the gross. best one we got so yeah. far of the story. Um, the week before, we saw The Purge Anarchy. Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah. We sure did. Um, we were it gets saying, more and more real every day, doesn't it? <laughs> well, Indeed. We were saying that uh, Frank Grillo mm-hmm. in that movie was kind of auditioning. 
Well, no, he's mm-hmm. not, not literally. It, no, but for the Punisher, the Punisher right? right? Level, but if yeah. you were going to audition for Punisher, you'd like, look, I did a whole movie. Wrong. Yeah, right. yeah, I'm Punisher. basically yeah. the Punisher. Lee Sanders says John Bernthal is the guy for sure, but I wouldn't be upset with Frank Grillo. Yeah. Okay. Uh, James May says the entire Purge series suffers from the same problem. They're good concepts done poorly. Of the series, the original is the best, even if it is just a home invasion movie mm-hmm. with a better cast okay. than mm-hmm. it deserves. While the ideas in the subsequent films are interesting, what they needed were stronger casts, less histrionics, and less resorting to cliche plot points. I agree. Yeah. Like I said, all the ideas we came up with on that episode are more interesting than right. the actual movies we got, and that's the problem, is, the problem with those movies is that... Yep. The concept is so high. It's so high concept, and yet they still can't execute on it. It's like, yep, oh boy, disappointing. Yeah. Well, there you go. Mm-hmm. There it is. Um, but thank you, each of you, for writing mm-hmm. in. Thank we you. Really appreciate yes, it. We love you. Thank you for writing in. And now we're gonna go around the table and tell you what we thought of tonight's movie. I'm starting with Michaela. What did you think? Were your echoes stirred tonight? <laughs> I hope. Um, yeah, this has been on my list for a while, so I'm glad you brought it because I do feel like we we're talking off mic a little bit that like we can't do the Sixth Sense because like that's an right. Oscar award winning like you can't go directly for and it. it's just like what can we add to the conversation about the Sixth Sense at this point? You we, know? we we it was um, here tonight. Twenty five years we later, to say, yeah, exactly. Pretty, pretty much happened here tonight. Um, if we had Sixth Sense, we'd be talking about Stir of Echoes. Yeah, exactly. And I remember. I remember there being times in my life me saying that this was the better movie and that being met with like incredulous, you know, just disbelief. Like, are you fucking kidding me? And I'm like, not saying, I'm not saying The Sixth Sense is a bad movie when I say that. I think they're both great movies. I think that they deliver different things. I think that The Sixth Sense has a little bit more heart and a little bit more emotional core to it than this movie. Um, I don't know if that is an intentional choice or not, but I think they both have a place at the table and they both deserve equal respect. And if you haven't seen it, like, why not? I feel like even if you know the twist, there's still a lot to get out of this movie. Now's the time. Yeah, exactly. 25 Um, years. Right. So, yeah, check it out. I mean, if they did a Fathom events and put this back in the theater, I'd go see it. So That'd be a good idea. Yeah, I definitely recommend it. It's, I mean, we don't get good thrillers anymore, you know? So treasure the ones we do have. Colin, what did you think? 25 years ago i was 25 when i saw this movie. oh wow oh, shit. i mean it oh, did shit. have even when i saw it i guess you know it's one of those things like this movie is like one of those all-time kind of favorites for me uh it has been on my list for a while it's just i relate to it so much it feels lived in you know and so I think for that, you know, we're saying geographically, yeah. uh, I, I draw a lot out of the movie that, yeah. you know, maybe uh, other viewers wouldn't. But um, <clears throat> I mean, I think, you know, it, it's the only reason that we always talk about, you know, Six Sense Stir of Echoes is because they were released in proximity yeah. to each other and they have a uh, savant kid who sees dead people. So there's enough of a, you know, a month right. apart. That's all you need. They're always going to be forever linked yes. uh, that mm-hmm. way to at least the people who remember, uh, you know, when they came out. Um, and I think like, you know, giving M. Night Shyamalan his due, The Sixth Sense is a great uh, movie. Yes. This is different. Uh, to me, this is the one I like to rewatch more. Um, this, is, this is just two different popsicles in a pack. Yes. Yeah. Kevin like Bacon, like this is, uh, you know, when you watch what he's doing here, um, it's a really good performance. I yes. think from this era of mm-hmm. Kevin Bacon, it's like, this is really good. Um, Catherine Irby is really good. Like, I like everybody mm-hmm. in the, the yeah. actors in this movie. It's like they nailed it. Uh, Kep nails the uh, the atmosphere, the, the dialogue. These people feel real and grounded. The uh, thriller aspect um, keeps you going. You know, uh, I think the screenplay is well written. You know, it's, like, yep. it's a very efficient, um, clever script. Yep. Uh, his direction is good. Like the camera works good. The production of it. This is a good movie. <laughs> you know, 
Um, I think you should watch it. It's uh, uh, one of my favorite um, ghost stories. And, you know, I mean, I love Richard Matheson and stuff. Yeah. This is another, like, he also did uh, in uh, Where Dreams Make uh, Come. Oh, I, love I was that movie. reading, uh, or What Dreams Make Come? What, dr- what Dreams Make Come. What dreams, yeah, yeah, I was reading, because I, I, I saw that he wrote that and I clicked on him. It's a depressing movie. Depressing. That is a hard fu- watch. Yeah. <laughs> fucking, but I was post, like, oh. post Robin Williams' death is even a harder watch. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Because yeah, 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 yeah. there's, there's yeah. heaven yeah. and hell and shit. Yeah. Yeah. And suicide, and, it's and suicide and wives and kids dying. Yeah. Jeez, whoa. Yeah. yeah. Oh. But it's based on his uh, a book by him. But um, yes. yes, I would um, recommend this all day long. It's one of, uh, I'm going to say my favorite. Does that mean it's one of the best? I think so. It's one of the best ghost mm-hmm. stories. You know, when people mm-hmm. are just like, hey, give me a good ghost story. Yeah. Sarah yeah. Echoes, check right. it out. Yeah, there you go. Um, yeah, I love this movie. Mm-hmm. Like, I, I loved it when it first came out. It's been a while since I watched it just because I wanted to, like, I don't know. I felt like I almost wanted to, uh, uh, when I rewatched it, I wanted to sit down and mm-hmm. pay attention to it. Like, I wanted it to be, you know, give my full attention to seeing this again. Um, I felt like I got that here tonight. It's just, like, I feel this uh, movie's aesthetic in my bones mm-hmm. like just like we described here tonight it's just oh they got it so right and it feels so good to see it uh represented on screen you're like that's exactly what it is mm-hmm. and you, you know you feel that from it um a great performance by kevin bacon like he's he's funny uh it's a very funny role there's a, it's funny throughout in in the moments from all characters i think give us a a good funny moment um uh, I mean, I think the scares are good. The visuals are, are I still think, very good and very still creepy and unsettling to me. Um, the story, the, just a really good ghost story, just a really good thriller. Um, yeah, I really love this movie. Oh, it felt good to watch it again tonight after so many years of having not seen it. Um, yeah, Stir of Echoes. And I don't know. Um, I, I love Sixth Sense, but I, oh, I'm, you can love them both. I'm not mm-hmm. even going to say one's better than the other. You can love them both. They're both great. Um, yeah, you should. Everyone should watch this movie. Like you said, like great ghost stories. Mm-hmm. Like this would be one of the, yeah, top five for me. It'd be like, yeah, watch that. It's great. You'll love it. Um, just really good from everybody in this. Um, hard not to like this movie. Uh, yeah, you should definitely watch Stir of Echoes. Um, yeah, I love it. All right, well, that means it's Freak Show approved. Freak Show approved. Freak show Holly approved. would love it, too. Yeah, sure. I can say that with almost 100% oh, yeah. certainty. She would recommend it. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yep. So that means you're contractually obligated to watch it. So yeah. uh, mm-hmm. uh, you're welcome. And you won't be disappointed. Yeah, you are welcome. <laughs> we did this for, I mean, we did this for us, but we did it for you. Yeah. So, so watch it. We moved our schedule around so I could be here because I was like, I don't <laughs> right. want to miss this. Like, I don't want to miss this. Yeah, like, yeah. Yes, we yes. can because yeah. understandably, yeah. you don't want to miss yeah, this. Yeah, exactly. All right, so next week, what do we not want to miss? A movie that's chosen by... Are you proxy again? I am proxy again. Okay. (laughs) For Holly. What is Holly picking uh, next week? All right. uh, Senator Fuqua has released an official statement uh, (laughs) that she wanted me to read. Oh. Um, (laughs) So it's November, and while I don't know if we'll ever be able to top the legendary Thanksgiving insanity that is Blood Rage, I am going to try. Next week, we are watching Blood Freak from 1972, where things are very go very wrong for a taste tester at a turkey farm and murder ensues. <laughs> she said, "Do not look up anything about this movie. There is a decent enough copy on YouTube." Okay, a blood. What is it yes. called? Blood Farm. Blood Freak. Blood Freak blood? from 1970, 1972. Okay, yes. I've heard of it. All right, yep. neither have I. I'm so. excited. Okay. Yep. Okay, all right. All right. Now, <laughs> Murder be careful, everyone, because a decent enough copy is what led us to Shocking Dark. <laughs> yes, yes. And we know what happened. Yes. <laughs> all right, so next week, please <laughs> join us for Blood Freak on mm-hmm. the Saturday Night Freak Show. And until then, ladies and germs, the basement is going dark.